you guys, Shanti Phillips here on a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Thank you to go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale today. I know today though, one of the big releases that comes out today is Tim Burton's Dumbo, the live action Dumbo film. I know when it comes to exclusives with that one, I know a Target has one which comes with a book. Walmart has, I don't actually know if Walmart has any exclusives, but uh, Best Buy though, I know has the exclusive steelbook of that one. Also though, at the end of this video, is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. And as always too, let me know in the comments below though what you guys thought of the Blu-rays, DVDs, and 4Ks which I reviewed. You know, if you guys have seen any of them, what you guys thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Also, if you guys didn't get a chance to see it on Sunday, I put up a new video of me going to film my uh, part in an upcoming horror film, uh, you know, Los Angeles Shark Attack. So definitely check out that video if you guys haven't got a chance to see that one yet. And over here, though, on the front, though, they have a standee out here for uh, Dumbo. Let's see, like I was saying, the exclusive one here that is a 4K exclusive, and that one is $34.99 for that. And that includes here a, um, a uh, limited edition filmmaker gallery book in this one. But I actually really, really like this one. I thought this one was kind of more of a throwback to some earlier Tim Burton. Like, the feel of this one, I don't know, when it came to, like, some of the more recent live-action Disney ones, I really did like this. I wasn't super familiar, though, with the original film. Like, I know I had seen it before, but it wasn't one of the Disney ones that I watched, like, again and again and again. But one thing, though, that was really cool about this, though, was having, you know, uh, you know, Danny DeVito and Michael Keaton together again. Because, you know, they were, last time they were together, you know, of course, was in uh, Batman Returns. But, um, like I said, this, the 4K one here is $34.99. And then the um, standard 4K is uh, $29.99. And then the Blu-ray DVD combo one, that one is, uh, you know, on sale for $22.99. But, like I said, highly would, hi would highly, highly recommend this one. I really, really did like that one a lot. And, like, here's a look to inside like I said it's a gallery book that comes in here also though they have uh, exclusive wise they have an exclusive of Cinderella because that one released today as well and that one's a uh, $28.99 for that and that has a um, limited edition filmmaker gallery and storybook in this one as well as well as a different cover on that so like I said that one's $28.99 for the limited edition and then $24.99 for the standard edition you know brand new uh, anniversary release of that one and see, yeah, there's nothing on the side, though, showing, you know, a closer look at this one. But still, definitely a cool one here as well, for, you know, exclusive-wise. But over here, though, I'm not seeing anything new. Like I said, I don't know if they didn't change anything out here, but I don't believe there's any other new big releases that are going to be in stores, so I'm not really seeing anything different from last week. I don't know if this is new, this thing here, which is Game of Thrones Season 1 through 7, this Blu-ray set here for $109. Like, I don't know if that's a newer release. But as far as I can tell, everything over here is the stuff from like last week and the, the past couple weeks. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like there's anything else new over here though at all as far as I can tell. Let's see though if in the, the kids section if there's anything new. But yeah, I think yeah, Wonder Park was last week. Yeah, it seems like all the other things here were last week as well as far as I can tell though. Into Walmart we go. But over here, though, it doesn't look like they have any exclusive editions here of Dumbo. But their uh, 4K of Dumbo is $29.96, and it's uh, $22.96 for the standard edition Blu-ray. And then the DVD-only one, that one's on uh, $19.96. And they have, like, a um, pre-order thing here for um, Pet Cemetery, which comes out, I think it's like a week or two that releases. But there's going to be one that comes with Part 2. So I guess it's going to come with, you know, it's like the digital version. So I guess, or is it going to be, the, I don't I'm pretty sure it's just going to be... The digital, I'm not sure, but hopefully at some point, Part 2 finally gets, you know, a Blu-ray release. Because I absolutely love Part 2. But then also, you know, uh, Cinderella, the Anniversary Edition, that one here is uh, $24.96. But other than that down here, though, all of the same things from last week. I think the only other thing new that I see, which I believe was today, well, actually two, was um, The Poison Rose with Sir Jean Travolta and Morgan Freeman. That one's $14.96 for that. And then the DVD is $12.96. This movie here. Furry. That one is uh, $14.96 for the Blu-ray and then $12.96 for the DVD. But they do have this one here for $12.96, this movie Isabel. So I don't know anything about this one at all. If you guys have seen this one though, let me know how this one was. Like I said, don't know anything at all about this. There's another movie that had a really similar cover to this that released a couple months back that I remember. Like, I don't know, it's like very, very similar looking kind of cover to that. But yeah, like I said, this is one of the only other ones today and that one's uh, $12.96. 
into the Valley Thrift Store we go. I think it's been like maybe a month or so since I've been in here. It's been a little while. So let's see what's new in here. It's always like the Valley of the Shoes. You have to kind of, you know, navigate through all these shoes to get over here. But let's see what's new in here today. Like I said, I definitely see a bunch of stuff down here on the bottom. So that's always a good sign. So we'll look through here and see what's, oh yeah, there's definitely a bunch of stuff. There's like all the stuff up down here. So yeah, we'll go through all this and see what new we can find today. This is one of those movies, it's like one of those movies that's like not a great movie, but for some reason, I like every time it's on TV, I always watch it. I don't, it's like one of those things like that. I have no idea why. Same with Jack and Jill. Like, I, I don't know, it's like one of those movies where it's like I know it's like a really, really like bad film, but I've watched that so many times throughout the years. I don't know why. Something about it is just really funny to me. This is one too, but somehow I've never watched this movie, The Pretty Woman. Like I've always heard great things about it, but it's like one of those movies somehow I've never looked at. It. But all the Blu-rays in here are $2.99. I think the DVDs are $1.99. Modern Family, the complete second season here. There's definitely some more Blu-rays than normal here today. Like I said, just gonna look through all this stuff and see anything different I can come across today. Yeah, but we're gonna look down here on the bottom and see anything interesting. These are weird things that come across in here, these 19 kids. This is a very strange show though. But um this one here I saw is Howie Mandel game, like a DVD game, would you rather? But the cars in here are like real like dirty looking. Like they're real messed up and everything but yeah they used to make all these like dvd kind of games i don't think they i've seen a new one of these kind of things in a really long time but like i said there's definitely a lot of stuff down here so gotta look through all this stuff and see if we can find anything in here different today and one pretty cool thing I heard was Danny Boyle mentioned recently that he's talking, thinking about doing an actual sequel to 28 Days Later. Because they did the um, 28 uh, Weeks Later one, which I thought was okay. For some reason, this always kind of reminded me of Demons 2. I have no idea why, but like there's like a scene in this that sort of reminded me of the movie Demons 2. But yeah, it'd be really interesting to see an actual sequel to this one. Because that's what I think it's going to be. And it'd be really cool if it had like Cillian Murphy back and Naomi Harris and like followed on with them all those years later. I think that'd be really a cool direction to go with that. But yeah, like I, like I said, there's definitely a lot more stuff in here today. Here's some more Blu-rays. A couple more over here, like the Hateful Eight. But like I said, just trying to look through all this stuff and make sure I don't miss anything interesting. Because so often, there's like really interesting things in here, and then I totally end up missing it. And then like, you know, see it later, or someone mentions it in the comments, like an out of print thing or something like that, that I miss seeing. I don't think Big Fish ever came out to Blu-ray. I might be wrong, but I think that one's still never been on Blu-ray before. And that's another one I really liked. Let's see though, anything else? And this is a funny thing here. This is like Nathan Burton comedy magic as seen on NBC's America's Got Talent. This is from like 2006. So this is like an early, early season of America's Got Talent. It's funny. It's actually signed by him on the disc. So that's really funny. I guess he must have sold this on his site or something like that. I never, I wasn't looking at, you know, America's Got Talent that early on. Like I look at it occasionally in the last few years I've watched it, but yeah, I didn't see this season though. So that's definitely a odd thing to see here. Yeah, so I looked around there and like looked through everything and I tried to find anything interesting today or anything and the only thing I ended up getting was that Nathan Burton thing because it was really strange. It was $2. I don't know if it was signed by him or just some random person signed it. I have like no idea. But like for $2, it looked like kind of an interesting sort of weird thing to come across. And this past weekend, the only one I saw in theaters was the Child's Play remake, Reboot, you know, which stars Albi Plaza. Now the thing about this movie was though, I actually liked it a lot more than I was expecting. You know, it's not the same 
theme. Uh, so the one thing I liked about it was it's is it changed around the story so much that it's pretty much like its own thing. Because like in the original, it was about you know the doll getting possessed by Charles Lee Ray. You know who when he, as he was dying, he like tra you know transfers his soul into the doll. In this one, this is like a smart doll where it's like a robotic doll which talks and is like connected to the cloud in your house all through this network. The doll is like made by this network that you know makes uh, security systems and video cam you know security cameras and like um, Alexa type devices where you'd ask it questions and everything and connects to the internet. So this doll is like a super smart doll which does all these different things and walks on its own and everything. And so this one though is really different because in the very very beginning of the movie there's no this is no spoiler. Uh, what happens is the guy who works at the factory is kind of like disgruntled and his boss is giving him all kinds of problems and everything and he goes in there and messes with the doll right before he ends up getting fired and he messes with the doll and like turns off certain functions on the doll where it you know would be able to like you know the doll wouldn't like kill somebody or do something really bad he turns all that stuff off and the doll you know ends up you know getting given to Andy Barclay's character because Aubrey Plaza's character works at the store and ends up getting the, st the doll there and ends up giving it to him and of course though it's like the doll is like you know wants to be friends with Andy Barkley and like be his best buddy and of course people start dying along the way and everything like I said I like that they changed the things around with this I was surprised too how gory the movie was it was super super gory like you know some some of the goriest stuff I've seen in like a mainstream theater release in a long time like some of the deaths and everything they're a real throwback to like 80s style so I really did think it was really decent. I really thought it was, like I said, a whole lot better than I thought it was going to be. I still, though, when it comes to the Child's Play movies, though, I feel like my favorite one, like because the first movie is like a really serious movie in tone, and then as they went along, they got much more comedic. This one is, is I feel like, is much more in, in line when it comes to the vibe of it with, like, the second and third one where it was getting starting to get a little bit more comedic and still had some dark elements in it as well with, like, the, the tone and what was happening. But, but I feel like this one was the gory of all of them that there have ever been like just with the level of gore and everything I, I, I said all around though I you know really like I actually really liked it I don't know if they're gonna do more of them I don't know if the movie did amazing to the point where they're you know do a whole lot more sequels I know though when it comes to the original series though there's gonna be a TV series of that soon which I'm really interested in seeing how they go with that series and I don't know if they're gonna continue on doing movies as well with it and continue that series on as well and if this if this TV series is gonna be its own thing is a whole totally different thing Thing. Let, let me know though in the comments below though what you guys saw the Child's Play you know remake if you guys got to check it out or what movies you saw this past weekend if you guys got to see anything new in the theaters. Into Best Buy we go. And in here today though their edition here of Dumbo the standard edition one that one's $22.99 and then the 4K one here is $29.99 but there's a uh, limited edition steelbook one here this is actually a really cool limited edition steelbook this one is a 4K one as well and it's $34.99 this is done like an old school like circus like the side of the circus you know uh, train like on the you know circus like train car that's actually really really cool I really like the look of this one here like I said this one is $34.99 also though Cinderella anniversary edition that one's $24.99 $4.99. They also have their own uh, steelbook of that one, and that one's uh, $29.99. Also, though, uh, Cinderella, the live action one that came out today for the first time on 4K, that one's $29.99 as well, and they have an exclusive limited edition Best Buy exclusive of that one. And I actually like this movie. I thought this was actually a pretty good live action movie, but now every time I think of this, I'm going to think of the show, you know, the act. We know about the character of Gypsy Rose, and you know, it was based on a true story, though, but her and her mother in that show, and then in real life as well went to see this so I'm always gonna think of that now you know because of the, the act but yeah like that was one of the only other ones today but otherwise over here I look in the section though but I'm not seeing anything else in here too different today at least over here and they have this horror standee over here promoting, you know, Annabelle Comes Home. And they have, like, the other movies here, you know, the other films in the series. And they are, like, $6.99, $7.99. So, yeah, they all seem to be on sale as well. That thing came down. But, yeah, there's a little horror thing, which is a cool promo thing to promote that. But other than that, though, over in the section, though, let's see if there's anything else in here different today. Yeah, they don't seem to have any of the steelbooks. They only seem to have those for the Dumbo in the front. Uh, and the other one as well. I think this... 
I don't know if this is new. I don't think so. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't believe so. I think this has been out a while. But other than that, though, they have Furry here as well. That one's $17.99. Uh, the Poison Rose here, that one's $15.99 for the Blu-ray of that. And this one here, a Ma Magala Box. I don't know anything about this. I believe this is an, an, an anime. This one's uh, $59.99. Other than that, though, let me see if there's anything else I'm seeing different here. Doesn't look like I see anything else in here different today, though, as far as I can tell. So anyway, though, guys, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, in the comments below, let me know, you know, what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K, if you guys picked up anything today. And as always, too, let me know, you know, what you guys thought of all the new uh, DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks that I reviewed, you know, coming up after this portion, you know, what you guys thought of them, if you guys also plan on picking up any of them. But anyway, though, guys, thanks again for watching and subscribing. Now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Shop Factory Screen Factory Line. It's the brand new collection edition here of Silent Hill. You know, this is based on the video game series. I remember, though, playing the very first game when it first came out. I believe it was on PlayStation. I remember how much it creeped me out, but I never, like, got past, like, the first, like, the beginning of it. I remember, like, I couldn't figure out what you do to get, like, it was, like, it started in this, like, real dark, pitch dark kind of, like, area outside or something, and I remember I couldn't figure out how to get anywhere in it, so I never really continued playing that game. But I remember it was really creepy, though. But, um, this movie, though, is basically, though, about this, um, this couple who, you know, have their adopted daughter, and their adopted daughter is, like, going out at night and, like, sleepwalking and, like, sort of acting, like, odd. And they're sort of trying to figure out what's going on. And she starts, like, saying Silent Hill, the name of the town. And, like, it's basically, though, about her mother taking the daughter to try and, like, um, she leaves one night without telling her husband, you know, that she's leaving. And they end up trying to actually go to this town to try and figure out, you know, exactly, like, what's going on and why, you know, her daughter is, you know, like like, you know, talking about this town and why all this sleepwalking is going on and seeing, like, what they can, you know, do. But on the way there, though, they end up getting into this accident because they see this girl in the middle of the road. And then, you know, it's like this, like, ghostly image of this girl. And then, of course, what ends up happening, though, is she wakes up, the mother, and her daughter's missing, and she's now in Silent Hill. And it's real, like, super foggy. And it's basically, though, about her and this town, which is a very extremely creepy town. There is some extremely creepy images in this movie of, like, these things that she's seeing and these characters she's coming across and some of the people that are in the town. But essentially, though, she's trying to find, you know, her daughter, where she is in this town, and she's, like, going through all... All these sort of weird type of like uh, settings and weird things that she's like I said these creatures and all sorts of things that she's coming across in this town it is a very very creepy super super atmospheric movie like I said I always really like this movie I also like the sequel as well this one on, on here though feature wise has a whole bunch of brand new features it's a two disc set here I'll show you guys a look inside here like I said it's a two disc set the first disc is the feature you know the movie and then the second disc is the special features but feature wise on here though it has a, um, a new commentary track on here with the director photography on this one as well as that's a theatrical trailer that's on the first disc on disc two though it has an uh, interview on here with the director as well as an interview on here with the special effects artist it has on here though t two uh, uh, interviews on here with one of the actors and one of the actresses as well as a archival making of Silent Hill on here which is a six part look at the making of the film so lots and lots of features on this one I also love the brand new artwork on this one but like I said very very creative creepy movie. If you guys have never seen this movie, one I would highly recommend you guys check out. The next one here is from uh, Shop Factory Screen Factory line as well. It's a movie here called uh, This Island Earth. This movie is from 1955. This one I remembered like renting this as a kid, and I believe this was the one too in the Mystery Science Theater uh, movie that, they, uh, that they're watching in that film. But essentially though, this is about... Um, this scientist who like he's like doing this experiment with this um this like uh airplane like with the government and like something weird happens to it he almost crashes and the plane like um you know it like changes colors and like starts glow glowing and everything and essentially though they, they can't exactly figure out why this happened and why you know he was saved because it looked like the plane was about to crash but then all of a sudden he's like doing like, like i said this like these experiments trying to work on this plane and work for stuff for the government and everything and he starts getting sent like um 
through the mail like these pieces like these weird type of like um stuff to use to build something and he can't figure out what these things are this is sort of like alien technology that no one's ever seen before that you can't like cut through it like a dime like it's almost like a diamond type of material that can't be cut through all these type of weird sort of things and it's essentially though him getting pieces you know through the mail and he starts like putting them together and it's basically these like aliens are trying to you know test him so if he can put together this machinery and like and then put together the thing that would contact the other these aliens then they find the person that they need to kind of come to their planet and help them and that's essentially what it is it's a really really cool like uh, science fiction movie and it's really cool alien creatures in here like these I feel like when it comes to like alien uh, creatures the creatures that you see in here are like some of the most like famous you know like look of like an alien like I, when I think of like classic science fiction I always think of these the aliens in this movie on here though feature wise it has a brand new 4k scan of the original film elements really really great transfer on this one also has on here though a um, stereoscopic scout sound recorded or you know restored by 3d film archive it has a, a commentary track on here with author and visual effects artist robert's uh sock sock so to pick I, I, I'm, no, I'm probably not saying that correct. Um, it also has on here a new uh, audio interview on here with a film historian. It has a new interview on here with a film filmmaker Luigi Cosi. Also has on here trailers from hell, the island, uh, you know, uh, the island Earth with commentary track by Joe Dante, you know, who was the director of like Gremlins and uh, lots and lots of different movies. But I, I always loved the trailers from hell because it was like the directors kind of like talking about the. Um, their take on the movie and everything. Also has on here, though, an extended making of documentary on here. Um, also has theatrical trailer and still galleries, but a really, really fun science fiction film here and really, really great uh, new transfer on this one. The next one here is from Lion's Gate, and this is the the, um, the third film in the series here, and this is Escape Plan, The Extractors, you know, which stars, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone, uh, 50 Cent, and Dave Bautista. And essentially, though, this is about, you know, in the first movie, it's about, like, um, you know, Stallone's character getting in this in this prison with, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and he has to try and get out. He kind of gets like double crossed and stuck in this prison, you know, cause he's like someone who's like sees how you can escape from prisons and things like that. Uh, the second one was dealing with him in prison as well. More uh, like prison, stuck in prison settings. This one though is about, you know, him and his team who, um, it's about this one girl, this uh, businessman's uh, daughter. And he's like someone who like designs kind of prison type things as well. And you know, his daughter ends up getting kidnapped and it's essentially though about him and his daughter gets kidnapped and taken into this super high security prison and and you know, Salone and his team have to try and figure out how they're going to get into this prison you know which is super you know complex and they have to figure out how they're going to get in there and try and you know get the you know, they get the guy's uh, daughter out of there and kind of get in there undetected undetected and figure out exactly how they're going to go through this place and kind of all the certain things that, that they're going to go through like I said this one's not the same where it's like stuck in a prison this one is more about him trying to get into a prison with the team. I think these are really fun movies, though. I always a fan, though, of Sylvester Stallone as well as uh, Batista. So it was a really fun, like, different kind of take on the story here. On here, though, feature wise, it has a uh, making of on here, a comedy track on here with the director and Sylvester Stallone and Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa plays like the um, the villain in here who's like responsible for kidnapping the one's daughter. It also has on here, though, a trailer gallery on this. Uh, the next one here is from Lionsgate is One. It's a movie here st starring Dolph Lundgren called Dead Trigger. And this is basically, though, um, it's a basically, it's like a futuristic science fiction uh, zombie horror film where it's like in the future, like everything is kind of falling apart and there's like been a zombie apocalypse. And, and the world is kind of like dealing with the zombies now. They're kind of like learning to live with them and like kind of like where they are and like what areas they can't go to and everything and the kids there the kids in this like in this world are all like playing this like video game where it's like a virtual reality kind of game where they're like hunting zombies and things like that in in the game and the government basically though has like recruiting you know certain some of these kids and they're kind of like you know finding some of the best ones at this game and bringing them over to be trained by Dolph Lundgren's character to go and like hunt these zombies and they have to try and get into this one area where they believe that they can if they can get in there they can kind of start to find like a cure to maybe actually cure these zombies and cure what's going on and everything so it's essentially about you know Dolph Lundgren and his team going into this one area trying to get to some person that they believe 
believe, you know, can help find the cure and everything. And it's all kind of the things that they're going through on the way and everything. But it's just like crazy uh, zombie movie. A lot of like, you know, crazy zombie like um, scenes in this one and everything. Always a fan too of Dolph Lundgren. So like I said, basically though, just like kind of him training these kids. And, you know, in here though, it's like... um. Uh, Romeo is one of the main kids in here that like is working with him and a bunch of other people as well on this But I thought this was actually a really fun uh, zombie film here The next one here is from Comedy Central and this is um I want to let you guys know this one was available and this is Broad City the complete series here And this has in here all uh, five seasons of the show and I'll show you guys a look inside here at this and it has you know season one it has uh, season two season three Season 4, Season 5, and also has a uh, special features uh, bonus disc, which is only in uh, the uh, complete series set here. And this is a show, I've watched episodes of this show here and there. It's about these two friends, and they're all in the, in, the, in the city, and it's kind of like them going through their life, and all the sort of problems that they have, and problems with their job, and relationship kind of things, and all sorts of just kind of comedic, ridiculous kind of problems that they get themselves into. It's actually a very, very fun show. But it has on here, though, feature-wise, it has behind the scenes it has making of season five uh it has a bunch of different features on this one like i said it has all five seasons as well as the bonus uh disc in this one the next ones here are uh, both from um black phone distribution and these are canadian releases and this is um the uh, blu-ray here of the film the ranger which stars Chloe Levine, you know, who was in the one movie that I really love called Transfiguration. I believe that was what it was called, which is a really great uh, vampire movie. If you guys have never seen that movie, I believe that's what it is. Uh, you know, but if you guys have not seen that movie, it's a really, really different take on vampire films. This one was basically, though, about her and her friends who are, like, you know, trying to get away from the cops. So they go and hide out in the middle of the woods and, like, um... There's this crazy forest ranger that's out there. And the forest ranger knew her, you know, Chloe Levine's character when she was a kid. You kind of find out more and more throughout this movie exactly what was going on. Because, like, you, they're, like, hinting at that he's, like, this crazy guy. And he's basically this crazy forest ranger that when, when, they're, when they're out there. You know, they're kind of messing around and, like, spray painting and causing all kind of mischief out in the woods and everything. So it's about him, kind of, you know, Jeremy Holmes' character who's playing the uh, crazy ranger. And he's out there going and, like, um, coming after them and it becomes this crazy thing about him going after them and killing them and he's going like totally like absolutely insanely nuts it's a great movie i really love it i love the music in this movie the look in this everything about this is just a really really cool movie really happy to have this one on blu-ray on here though it has a whole bunch of different features it has a comedy track on here with the writer and director as well as the co-stars in this one and the, and the actors as well it has on here the uh, five making of featurettes on here you know it has um from script to screen uh, the Troublemakers, The Rangers cast, feature at talking about the cast in here, trailers on this one, uh, The Rangers soundtrack talking about the music in this movie. So like I said, really, really great music in this one. And I love the look of this because it looks sort of like an aged, like sort of messed up cover and everything. I don't know. I really love the way this one looks. This one here is from Black Fawn Distribution as well. It's a movie here called The Heretics. And this is... um. It's basically, though, about this girl who you find out, you know, was kidnapped, you know, a year when she, I think it was like five years before by this crazy cult. And she ended up escaping because the entire cult, you know, killed themselves. And she woke up and they were all dead and everything. And she, like, um, because of this, though, she's been going to, like, grief meetings and meetings like that to kind of talk through the grief of what she's gone through. And when she was there, though, at these grief meetings, she met her girlfriend there, and they kind of, like, the best thing that happened was them meeting at this, you know, these meetings. But then, all of a sudden, though, the one day this girl, though, who, you know, got away from this cult, she ends up, you know, leaving to go to her house, and she gets, like, taken in by to this van, and it's this crazy guy who, you know, survived through this, you know, wasn't, didn't die in this cult, and basically you know ends up kidnapping her and it's about her girlfriend trying to figure out exactly where she is and trying to track her down and like looking for the clues and everything and then about the girl though tied up in this in this cabin this guy's house and he's like saying you know oh there's big things are coming and he's like you, you know that like something is leading up to something crazy to happen like i said this was actually a pretty cool like crazy cult film here it has on here though a commentary track on here behind the scenes featurette it has on here the heretics festival tour photo gallery and trailers on this one
one. And the next one here is from Movie Zing and The Orchard, and it's a movie here called Extracurricular Activities. This is an interesting movie. This is about um this guy, this kid who is going and like um figuring out how to plan out like accidents like his kid and he's like a high school kid and he's planning out how to like he plans out accidents where like if these kids parents are like annoying them and everything he figures out how to have an accident and die like um bobby lee's in here as like um this dad who's like really annoying and annoys his kids at parties and trying to like pick up the girls at the parties and everything and like he f make figures out how to make it so like he ends up dying in this hot tub and like in the beginning of this movie too you see like um this these are all like in the very beginning of this movie you see like this one family go off this cliff and it's like I said this all this kid is involved in setting all these things up and planning it but this one cop though is starting to notice that there's something this kid is always around at these funerals and is around with the in, in scene with these kids and so and everything and it's essentially about him trying to figure out exactly how this kid is connected because he sort of becomes like obsessed thinking that you know these things that look and, and appear to be accidents are not really accidents and he's noticing that there's something going on he's trying to kind of he's like stalking this kid and following him and trying to figure out exactly you know what is going on and what exactly he's doing it kind of has vibes in here a little bit of like Heather's a little bit like that kind of a feel in this one uh, but really good cast in this one as well a lot of like um the one actress in here was in the movie uh, Patty Cakes. She was in here. Uh, so a bunch of different people, like I said, Bobby Lee is in here, and a bunch of like a couple of cameos is like playing some of the uh, parents and stuff in that in the movie. The next one here is from The Orchard as well, is also from Movie Zing, and this is a movie here called um, The Hummingbird Project, which stars Jesse Eisenberg, Alexander Skarsgård, and Selma Hayek. And this is about um, you know uh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg's character and Alexander Skarsgård's character, who are these cousins who work doing like stuff stuff with the stock market and things like like that and they're trying to plan out how to like run this wire this like this line where they can like you know run it um I think like a thousand miles where like they would get like stock tips like a millisecond quicker than anybody else so then they would make all this money and it's essentially about them trying to figure out how to plan the whole operation of you know you know, having this whole wire put in where so they would, you know, profit off and they would kind of have control over this thing and it'd be something that they're running. But it's also dealing with Selma Hayek's character who's kind of getting wind of all this and she's going to try and do her own thing with this. And it's all about the stuff that they're all going through and trying to like get permission in these towns, the people to run this wire through the neighborhood and all this kind of stuff. So it's all sorts of like um, problems and stuff like that that they're going through. It's like I said, kind of an interesting movie here. It has on here though uh, deleted scenes on this one. And the next one here is from Movie Zing as well, and it's a movie uh, documentary here called Loud Crazy Love. And this is the uh, true story of you know the um, the uh, uh, the member from the band Corn, Brian Head Welch, you know from Corn who, you know, was, you know, with Korn in the very beginning, and it's all about how, you know, he left the band for years and then came back to the band, but he left, when he left the band, he found religion and kind of, like, um, sold off things having to do with the band and was, like, totally changing everything in his life because in here it kind of shows and talks about his whole story about, you know, Korn's success and has interviews with Jonathan Davis and members of the Korn, of the band Korn talking all about, you know, what had happened in their drug addictions and, you know, Brian's character, you know, Brian is talking in here, though, about how you know everything was great with the band and you know he was like on the top of the charts he was like number you know Corn was number one on the charts but at the same time though he was having these terrible addictions to drugs and he just had a, a daughter you know that was just recently born and you know he was like not happy with the way things were going in his life and he basically went and tried to turn everything around and like I said found religion and then it also goes through his own daughter who was going through problems in her own life with you know kind of destructive things happening with her and kind of all, all sorts of the things that he was going through but it's actually a really well put together documentary here and it has on here though a theatrical trailer and deleted scenes on this one the next one here, this one is a, um, just so you know, this one is a uh, Region B locked release, so you guys would have to have an all-region Blu-ray player to play this one. But this is a, an Italian release from um, Midnight Factory. This is from the Midnight uh, Classics line. And this is the movie directed by uh, Jeff uh, Lieberman here. So I always really like this movie called Squirm. This is a really, really crazy movie about, like, the, the electric lines went down this town and ended up bringing up these crazy, um, you know, bringing up, like, all these worms into the town and these, like, they're, like, supercharged 
crazy killer worms that are like attacking people in the town. And it's essentially like there's like sequences in here with this all these worms everywhere that look sort of like like big things of spaghetti. Like they're really strange looking. And I, but I always love this movie. Jeff Lieberman also directed the amazing must watch, you know, um, Blue Sunshine, as well as Just Before Dawn, which was a um, you know amazing super underrated slasher movie. You know, which was like kind of like right before uh, you know Friday the Thirteenth. You guys have never seen this movie though. This is absolutely a must watch. It has on here though an exclusive interview, a Q and A on here, a counted track on here, trailer and TV spots. Uh, like I said, this one is region B locked, so keep that in mind. So you guys would have to have an all region player to play this. But I'll show you guys a look inside here, and it's like I said, there's a two disc set here, which has the uh, you know Blu-ray and then the special features. Inside though, there's a booklet which has you know some things about the movie, and this is like I said an Italian release. But you know here's like a look at these worms. These are super creepy worms. These close, crazy close-up shots of these worms. But I always really like this movie, and you don't hear about this one too often. And it's just a really, really fun. You see here, here's these like spaghetti type worms. But you don't hear about this one that often, and it is an absolute must-watch. I saw too that um, Midnight Factory is going to be releasing a double feature set of Troll. And Troll 2 in the Best Worst movie, which looks really cool. That's coming out uh, in July. And the next one here is from Severin Films. It's a movie here called Robo War. This is one I had never seen before. This is directed by Bruno Mattei. You know, he was credited in this movie, though, as Vincent Dawn. Like, that was like a credit that he used on a lot of his movies. This one, though, is like a uh, takeoff on uh, Predator. This, because this was from 1988. And this is like a. Um, very, very similar plot to Predator, only instead of it being an alien that's out in the jungle, you know, attacking all the aren't these soldiers and everything, this one is a kind of a rogue robot that's gone like haywire out there. And it's got the same kind of stuff where like in the Predator, it had like the Predator's view where it saw like through heat signals and everything. Through this, the robot seeing everything through like kind of the robot vision, which is like kind of like pixely, kind of like pixelated images and stuff when it's like hunting the people that's coming after. But essentially though, this is about the army ends up sending um like the army knows what's out there that it's this robot but like um they tell the one guy listen you need to go out there with this team you need to stop and take out this robot we need to you know you know stop it because it's like going crazy but we don't want you telling the other soldiers what this thing is you just have to tell them that we're out there they're, they're out there on this mission but don't tell them really what they're doing don't worry about it once you you know take out this robot we'll figure out what we're going to do and and, de and deal with it when you don't you know just don't tell them so of course all these soldiers are out there going in there and they're like here things in the trees and they're go and then like there's even sequences in here just like in Predator though one sequence where uh, the one character is like has a machine gun and is like shooting at the trees when they see something and hear something out there and it's like oh if it's something out there it's definitely dead now so it's like total like copies of some of the scenes and everything in here and even some of the characters like this one character is kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger's character and it, it has like very very similar vibes to what's going on just like the whole way the story flows and everything there are things changed around and there's some like added characters and added different stuff and like I said of course this one is a robot not a you know an alien but it still has that very very similar vibe but I thought this was a very fun movie uh, you know picture quality looks great on this it has a whole bunch of different features on here it has like uh, interviews on here with the co-director a whole bunch of different cast interviews on this one uh, on this one as well as some behind the scenes and a theatrical trailer but a really really great release like I said lots and lots of inter new brand new interviews with the cast and crew in this one the next one here is from Severn Films as well. And this is one here called The Beast and Heat. And this is like a combination of like two other films and then it added in this new stuff to it. And this was like a Nazi exploitation film. This is from 1977. And this is basically though about this... Um, it's like, like I said, they they took something from other movies. I feel like I might have seen the other movies that they were taking scenes from, but it's like adding in this stuff with um this crazed like um kind of like deformed gorilla kind of creature. Sort of that's sort of what it's kind of like. Um, sort of a gorilla creature, like kind of like a deformed guy, and he's like in this cage, and he's like attacking and doing horrible things to the people in the concentration camp, and it's kind of like, um, it's like if you've seen Nazi exploitation films, it's all like a very similar kind of plot, like a really bad guy who is like running the place, and he's like horrific the way he treats everybody, and like, um, 
and he's kind of like the one bad guy and this one is like dealing with weird experimentations on this guy and like kind of just like insane kind of stuff going on like I said I don't know for sure what movies they were taking all this stuff from but it's kind of like mixing things together I think it was uh, like I said, I feel like I had seen some of the other ones, but I wasn't 100% sure. But on here, though, feature-wise, it has on here a um, feature-length uh, documentary on uh, Nazi exploitation films, as well as an interview on here with uh, with uh, Stephen Thrower, the author of Murderous Passions, and the theatrical trail. This one, too, really great picture quality on this one as well. And the next ones here are all from ITN Distribution. It's four titles here. The first one here is a movie called Red Summer. And this one, I kept trying to think too, because I, I believe this movie was filmed in Spain. And the one area looked a lot like where they filmed the movie Dagon, the Stuart Gordon movie, like this small town that they were in. But it's about a group of these people going through this small town on this trip and everything. And it becomes kind of like... um. It's sort of like a weird, desolate, kind of like abandoned type town that they're going through where you can tell like there's something odd and off going on in here because like I said, there's very few people there. Things seem very strange there. And it's and essentially though, they end up going through this like back road and into the into the, the town and everything. And it, it becomes like they get like kidnapped by these oddballs that are, and it, and it becomes sort of like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of situation with them like in, put into these cages trying to figure out how they're going to escape and it becomes like an absolute nightmare situation but it's like a really really crazy type thing they're going through like i said if any of you guys know though let me know if that was the spot where they filmed dagon like the town that they go through the next one here is a movie called a uh, clown motel which stars uh, ari lehman and this is from itn distribution as well this is basically though it follows around like um these ki these friends that are going on like a bachelor up, these girls are going like a bachelorette kind of weekend party in Vegas, and then these other guys who are like sort of like ghost hunter type guys, and um, what ends up happening though is they end up going like kind of driving into this kind of like vortex kind of thing in the middle of the desert and they end up going through this thing and like the, in, in the movie though the clown motel in the very beginning of this movie was like you know burnt down and the, the town the motel was all like where all these crazy uh clowns like lived and hung out and like the whole place was set on fire so everybody died in the clown motel the whole place was burnt down and you know essentially though you know when they drive through this vortex kind of thing both of them they get trapped in there and they keep on driving past this clown motel going why, why, why can't we get past this thing? We've gone for another thirty minutes, and we just drove past the whole thing again. What's going on here? And they, like I said, they, they both these different, two different groups of people find themselves trapped in this clown motel. And in there, though, the crazy clowns that died in the beginning the, are now there, you know, in this time warp or whatever exactly is going on. And they're going after the people there, killing them off, and they're all trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do and how to like survive from these crazy clowns. This is actually filmed in the real uh, clown motel it's out in a you know way in the Nevada desert uh, the next one here is a movie from ITN distribution as well called Amityville Mount uh, Misery Road. And this is about these these two guys, this, uh, this couple who, uh, this uh, husband and wife who, you know, kind of do like um, haunted kind of videos and are really into like haunted type attractions and haunted areas and like haunted roads and all that kind of stuff. And they want to go to this one uh, area of, of this road where they believe is like super haunted and where weird things have happened there in the past and everything so it's kind of about them doing this documentary about them like kind of talking about it and then going into the in the town talking to people like what they've heard about this town and if they've heard you know about the, the being haunted and like what they what they know about it and all that sort of stuff and it's essentially them like sort of just like I said it's all done like found footage about them you know leading up to them getting to this town and then of course you know you know there's going to be some creepy odd stuff that happens to them you know when they get to this road here and this one is from itn as well and it's called on um, the music box this is about this girl who ends up staying with her um you know her aunt because of something happened to her parents and you know when she's there though this girl is like drawn to like digging something up in the backyard and she ends up digging up this old music box and then what ends up happening though is when she digs up this music box that she found you find out two more throughout this movie you know what exactly is with this music box and you know what's like haunted about it and what's going on with it but of course though once she digs this music box up though she starts you know having weird things starting happening to her she starts acting really weird like just so things are just becoming very off 
about how she is and you know the aunt is trying to figure out exactly what's going on and what is happening to her and trying to figure out like you know what is causing all this stuff so it's a sort of basically though like a haunted kind of Amityville sort of kind of the possession kind of mix of all those kind of things together with her trying to figure out exactly what's going on here the next one here is from um, uh, Unearthed Films and this is from their Unearthed Classic line it's a movie here called uh, The Dark Side of the Moon this is one I, I, I don't believe I had ever seen before and the one actor in here I'll show you guys in a minute was the guy who was in um, Prom Child 2 who played like the twins and I, I just kept thinking of him from this because like I hadn't really seen him in a lot of other things I'm sure he was in a lot of other movies but I always remember from Prom Child 2 like the twins that you know they're like Junior Healy's neighbors when he moves to the new neighborhood like um, their father and he drinks that lemonade if you guys remember that like I, I always remember that scene but um, you know he's in here as one of the main characters I'll show you guys a picture in a second but it's basically though this is kind of like a um, very similar plot to Alien and it's about like this ship of the, in space that is going on this like um, they're doing like a like a, like a rehab kind of mission to like fix up these satellites and everything and um, they end up discovering they see like this old NASA uh, you know uh, spaceship up there and they're like well what is this thing up there and they kind of like are you know investigating it and they go and like you know go into it and everything and essentially though it ends up instead of being like alien it ends up being like um like the uh characters like what something weird happens to them and it's sort of like getting like possessed so it's like a really different take than what you're expecting you know the, the what kind of stuff happens in this and it just deals sort of with like a possession kind of thing in space and has really really cool music in this as well i actually thought this was pretty cool this has on here though it's a newly re restored in 4k really really great transfer on this one has a commentary track on here with the executive producer uh, and as well as a bunch of different interviews on here with the special effects artist interview on here with the stunt uh, you know uh, stuntmen on this one as well as trailers uh, photo gallery and there's also a booklet in here like I was saying in here a booklet which has pictures in here you know from the cast but this was the guy that was in um, Problem Child 2 so I thought it was kind of cool seeing him in here the other main um, actor in here was the one who was the um, you know the um, you know the you know the uh, bartender in um you know uh the shining and he was in this one as well but i thought this is actually a pretty cool movie here and the next one here is from MVD and Kit Parker Films. This is one that just one of the guys know is available. And this is the second volume here. This is the Noir Archive Collection here, which is a nine-film collection of all uh, film noir movies. Like I said, this is volume two of the collection. And all the films in here are from 1954 to 1956. And in here, though, the movies that are in here is um, the movie Bait, The Crooked Web, uh, The Night Holds Terror, uh, Footsteps in the Fog, Cell uh, 2455, Death Row, Five Against the House. Uh, it has on here uh, New Orleans. Um, it has a, a Spin, A Dark Web, and Rumble in the Docks. And in here, like I said, this is a nine film set and it's uh, three discs here. So like I said, if you guys are fans of film noir films, one of the guys know that this one was available. And the next one here is from Brainstorm Media. It's a movie here called We Have Always Lived in the Castle. This is from the writer of The House on Haunted Hill. And this one here, you know, this has uh, Alexander Dediadro in here, Crispin Glover, uh, Tahisha Firminga. I always I'm, I know I'm saying her name wrong, but she was recently in The Nun, uh, as well as Seb uh, Sebastian Stan. This is based Basically, though, about these two sisters who live out in this house, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, with their uncle, you know, played by Crispin Glover. And it's basically, though, um, they kind of are like, um, there's all these like rumors around them in, in the town, and they think that Alexander Daniel's character like killed her, killed her father, and like there was all this stuff, and it's like weird things that happened with this family, and weird things in the past and everything. But in the town, though, people in there are always giving them all sorts of problems, and like you know, kind of giving them all kind of issues and everything. And it's basically though, they're, they just both of them live out there with their uncle, you know, Chris McGlover, and he's like real weird out there, the way he's acting and everything. But then, um, and he has all kind of certain things like, oh, this is the, you know, my brother's chair and all these, all these kind of things. And it's one of these movies that's very super, super atmospheric and everything. But Sebastian Sands' character kind of comes there to stay there and he's like their cousin. And like, he has like motives for what he's trying to go there, like deal with like money and stuff like that, like his reasons and everything. And he kind of goes there and sort of shakes things up in the house and it's kind of causing all sorts of like turmoil and everything like that. I thought this was actually a pretty interesting, very, very atmospheric uh, ca uh, character film here. 
The next ones here are all from uh, Wild Eye Releasing. And this is one I was really interested in watching. This is a documentary here called Scary Stories, which is uh, the documentary on the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark book series, which I remember, you know, they're doing a movie of that too, which comes out soon, which I can't wait to see that. But I remember as a kid how much those the Scary Stories like books freaked me out. I never really read the books. What I always did was listen to the books on tape. So I listened to the audio versions of it. So like if kids came over like at night and stuff, we, we would always put on those things and listen to them and it's like where is my big toe and all that stuff <laughs> and i remember that so much how much those creep me out but this kind of is all about talking to the people who are involved in the books talking to like rl stein in here like about you know, about kids horror books and also about the controversy of these books so they were trying to ban these books because like they thought they were too gruesome and too freaky for kids and all that kind of stuff and this is all a documentary all kind of focusing on the popularity of these books and all that kind of stuff on here though it has a director's commentary uh, bonus foot features on here as well as bonus trailers on this one but really really interesting documentary here, the next one here is from Wild Eye Releasing as well. And it's a movie here called Scrawl. And this is a movie that stars uh, Daisy Ridley, you know, who was on, you know, in the, star, the newest Star Wars films playing Rey. And I, th I believe she did this movie like right before she did the Star Wars film that she, you know, the first of the Star Wars film that she starred in. But I believe this was like right around that time. This is from 2015. I think it was like I said shot like, a, like right before then. This is basically though about this kid who is like draws these kind of crazy uh, comic books. Like these, um, and in the comic books, though, he's also envisioning, like, things happening to his friends and stuff in these comic books and drawing them out and everything. And what's going on, though, is these comic books he's drawing, like, the people in them and stuff are having things happen to them. And it's sort of like, um, you know, that what, what he's sort of thinking is kind of happening, and it's, like, sort of about weird bad stuff happening to his friends and him trying to figure out what he can do and how he can kind of stop it. And that, that, that's essentially what the movie's about. But it has on here, though, a director's commentary track on here, uh, cast and crew interviews, making of documentary on this one, as well as short films. So a lot of different features on this one as well. This one here is from Wild Eye Releasing, and it's a movie called High Def. And this is from the makers of, you know, the uh, anthology horror film High 8. So I really liked High 8 as well. I thought that was a really, really fun horror anthology. And this one is like the backstory of like how the stories come in this one is like they, these girls who are in, in LA on this trip see this flyer that says if you want a scary experience you know scan this code on your phone and like it'll be like a terrifying experience that you go through so when they scan this thing on their phone they end up you know it cuts to like the different uh, anthology horror stories that they're that they're watching and everything and I actually thought this one had some really really good you know effective horror story you know uh, anthology you know horror segments in this one but it has on here though uh, featurette wise it has commentary track on here with the executive producer on this one commentary track with all five directors and cast and crew anatomy of a screen making of um a documentary on this one as well as uh, trailers and teasers on this one but really really cool horror anthology film and if you guys liked you know high eight i recommend you guys check this one out as well because it's the same people behind it this one here from um wild eye releasing as well just want to let you guys know that this one was available and i talked about i believe i reviewed all these ones as they were released in the past but this is a shark attack three movie pack which has three different shark films in here it has a uh, shark Sharkenstein, uh, Raiders of the Lost Shark, and Shark Exorcist. So it's a three movie uh, set here. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one was available. Also, they sent over these flyers for some upcoming ones that they're going to be coming out. This one looks really interesting here called Clown Nato. I'm not sure when this one releases, but I think it was pretty soon, I believe. But this one looks like a very fun movie. And then um, also the Velasa pa Velocer pla uh, Pastor here. That's one of the other uh, upcoming ones from what I'm releasing. Uh, and the last one here is from um, Monarch Home Entertainment. This is a movie here called 13 Graves. This is about like these uh, hitmen, you know, and they, and they basically like... Like, you know, they take people out that, you know, to into the middle of the woods to, like, kill them and, like, bury their bodies. So there's, like, other graves and stuff out there. And essentially, though, they end up taking out this guy out there to basically, you know, put him in the ground. And that's essentially what it is. But when they're out there, though, it's sort of about, like, really odd things happening and like um the graves and stuff you know where there were, were bodies and stuff are now like missing and it's essentially though about them out there and the other guy trying to get away and stuff like that essentially and then it's like really really strange strange things are happening to them out there and it's kind of like things coming back to get them out there in these woods it's a really pretty
pretty cool concept. It's basically though them out there with all sorts of problems and everything going on and things coming back to get them and everything from their past and everything. But this is a really, really interesting movie here. Like I said, this one is called 13 Graves for Monarch Home Entertainment. But anyway though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching.